well. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, please. You're late. Guys, up, please. <laughs> 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 Is everyone settled down? Is everyone settled down? Hey, guys, is everyone settled down? Right, um, firstly, let's welcome Claire and Nziki to our tutorial. Claire is a fourth year tutor, and Nziki is her star student. Oh, so Ziki is kind of like the fourth year Zuki and... and uh, <laughs> 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 well, Claire and Ziki were actually invited here to tell us more about how their kids advance in understanding numbers. Now, in our model, we call it uh, level two of children's cognition. Now, number words are used to point to countable objects. So, I have five fingers. And each one, I give a name. Now, I have five water bottles. <clears throat> this bottle is placed here at a place I call zero. <laughs> yeah. This is on a place in, on the number line called one. And I place this bottle the place I will call two. This place I will call three. Mm -mm. Uh, don't, don't move it. But it's not in line with others. Aha. Uh -huh. The bottles don't have to be in a straight line. As long as the distance is the same. Distance between three and four. Distance from four and five. And now we have six bottles in a number line. I know that you think this should be a straight line, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can prove to you that number lines are very seldom straight lines. They're only straight in books. Don't get too hung up on the textbook there, Zuki. Uh, Jerry, if I understand this concept correctly, it looks at the way children see in their mind's eye or concretely mm -hmm. a horizontal line starting from left to right, from zero, followed by successive numbers, counting forward or backward, and also knowing which number follows which one and which numbers comes before the other. Well, actually, there's no neuroscience that says they really see it. There's an excellent blog on this. About 15% of people have a visual image of a number line in their minds. The latest research shows that it could be the working memory that has a temporal distance. Now, in more familiar words, kg time distance. That's what makes it a follow-up. One quantity name comes after another or before another, and they have some sort of image because of the way they were professed when they were small. Right, one professor tells me she still has an image in her mind of a twisted ladder from small uh, single numbers mm -hmm. and tens and hundreds and thousands beyond the clouds oh, up wow. to infinity. And she still has that image whenever she calculates mentally. Mm. And she's like so old. <laughs> wow, it's amazing she can still calculate. Oh, shame, man. But that's a good example. That's a very good example. In the same way, if you learn to read in some languages like Farsi, which is what they speak in Iran. You learn to read from right to left. And so you read your number lines from right to left because that's what your reading of number lines teaches you. So direction of number line depends on your cultural tradition of literacy. All right, whoa, Farsi. Could you explain that please? Iran, Farsi, language. Guys, don't forget, maths is a cultural invention. It's only been around for a few thousand years. People made up maths. It didn't just fall from the sky. Humans constructed it so that they can manage and understand the environment. Maths is just as much a, a cultural artifact as hip-hop or kwaito or rap. 
But the other time we learned that maths is innate. So what now? Are we not born with it at all? Well, we are born with only certain mathematical abilities, like the ability to see one through three objects and to know how many objects there are. If we know counting words, we would be able to say that there are three objects, but no more. And we're born with the ability to guess big numbers approximately. But you would know this if you were in class last week. <laughs> Even some animals are born with this ability, but they can never learn more because they don't have a language to use to teach more. Understand? We have 11 languages that we use in South Africa to teach maths and to make sense of the number word rhyme. We are not born to count or to understand the concept of 20 or 12. We are not born understanding how many objects there are when I say, for example, the quantity of 15. We have to be taught systematically. And the rest, we have to learn, learn, learn. But this does not come naturally at all. Okay, you will be the smartest student here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, please. Tsepo, KG could easily be the smartest student to this class if he works hard. All of you need to understand that you are only as smart as the amount in which you learn. But you have to be taught by a teacher who knows that you have to learn number knowledge systematically. This means that she needs to teach systematically too. Not in a jumble stew. Like a Mutsuako. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, KG. Exactly. Thank you. But now let's get back to the number line. Now, guys, when I say line, I do not mean a straight horizontal line only. Got it? Mm -hmm. It can go anywhere. Just take a look at that blog. Well, actually, yes. It does not always have to be a horizontal line. What about temperature measurement? Come on. When it gets hot, the mercury goes up along the number line. And when it cools down, it shrinks and it goes down the number line. See? Up and down. The number line, or as I prefer to call it, the number sequence shown in a line, can have many faces. In other words, it can take on many different names and shapes. But what is important is that children understand the logical order of numbers, the meaning a number has in relation to other numbers in the number line, and that all numbers have a position on the slide. No, but hey, that's not all. Wait one minute. <sighs> and we need to remember that this is only an image of a line, not a real thing. It is also important that they learn about intervals. This is the distance or different quantities represented by different numbers. Kahi, and the fact that the spaces between the numbers remains the same on any specific number line image. Oh, gosh. Okay, let me explain it again. You can't say that one kilogram is heavier than another, or that one kilometer is longer than another. Or that one meter is shorter than another meter. Or that one liter is more than another. The weight, the volume, and the distance always stays the same. Ah, oh, okay. You are mixing things here. I mean, is the number line not only about distance? Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm confused. KG, it is any measurement of anything. You see, this is why we say the mental number line is only a metaphor. It just stands there as a placeholder for your thinking. Mm. And this is so whether we're looking at the difference between two and four, which is a difference or interval of two numbers, or 32 and 34, 34 and 36, which is a difference or interval of two numbers. It's the same with 32 kilograms and 34 kilograms. 32 meters, 34 meters two meters more, two kgs more. Yes, I've seen this during my school practice, where children, they learn a number line in an horizontal way, where they are given zero to 100. But if you ask them to identify 51 from the number line, they cannot do that because mm. they, it's like they are singing it. Mm. They learned it in a parrot way. Mm. 
Why? Mm. How can you please explain? I don't know. Is it because maybe they cannot, uh, they struggle to identify a specific concept in a number line, or is it is it because of they think of um, the maze or mix uh, symbols? Oh, I can answer that. I have read that a cognitive scientist, Dehane, says that children knows the difference between smaller numbers, which are numbers earlier on the number line, than the bigger numbers. Smaller numbers will be evenly grouped with even spaces, and bigger numbers will be grouped more tightly together. This is the approximation idea. They see smaller numbers as actual numbers and bigger numbers approximately. Thank you, Zuki. That is exactly what our first slide is about. Actually, when we speak about the mental number line, it's only a metaphor. It is the word line that stands in place of the concept, the sequence of numbers with exact intervals. Now, like Jerry said, the mental number line metaphor is usually nothing more than an ordinal representation of number according to position. It shows which number is where in the sequence. Okay? Now, Lauren Resnick is an educational psychologist, and she's made notable contributions to the cognitive science of learning and instruction. Now, she says that numbers correspond to positions in a string with the individual positions linked by a successor or next relationship. And a directional marker on the string specifying that later positions on the string become larger. Now, in the beginning, the distances between numbers remain unreflected. This is because evenly distributed intervals is not easy for children to understand. But I like the idea of a string. This makes sense. Anna Marie Fritz is a German developmental psychologist, and she's also an investigator of children's mathematical cognition. In an article written by her and her colleagues, they suggest that the construction of a linear number line enables the children to identify preceding and succeeding numbers. As the numbers on the line become progressively larger, the numbers that appear later on the line are larger, but the distances between them stay the same. Thus, succeeding numbers are larger or bigger, while preceding numbers are smaller. With this knowledge, numbers can be compared to each other according to their position on the number word line. Children can now correctly answer the question, which number is larger, four or five? They can also say which number comes before or after another. And in different languages, these words can be very confusing for kids. Hey, I think I know what you mean. The other day I was in a text with Lesedi. Remember Lesedi, who qualified as a foundation face teacher last year? Well, I remember her. She, she's hot, guys. She's hot. Like, you've seen her. Well, she's also a good teacher. I mean, she knows such a lot, man. The other day I was in a text with her when her mom and her little girl got on. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Tanda has just been to an athlete's day. Wow. She did very well. <laughs> we are going to see Goko, who cannot wait to see her. She ran so fast. Number one. Number one? But her cup says second place. Why does she think she's won? Hi, Tepo. It does not matter. Remember that children at her age still struggle with the ordinality of successive numbers. Mm. So they're at a very egocentric stage of their development. Every time they're in a race or a competition, they feel like they've won. Mm. So even though she was not first, she still feels like she was first. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it's different to the child who came in ninth or eighth place. That child will probably feel like they've lost. Mm. Baba, how far is it still to Southgate? About 10 kilometers. Baba says about 10 kilometers. About 10 kilometers. Oh, I don't know how to explain that to you, girl. May I try to explain? Now, Tando, a kilometer measures how far we have traveled, okay? Now, I'm going to ask Baba to tell us each time we've traveled one kilometer, okay? Baba, can you please tell us each time we've traveled one kilometer? 
Sure, I'll tell you each time we have traveled one kilometer. Tando, how many kilometers have you traveled? 10 kilometers. Good girl. High five. Listen, I must say, you are a really good teacher. I don't know if I'll ever know as much as you do. Ah, oh, thanks, Tepo. You know what? You and your tutorial group should come and visit my classroom sometime. I think that is where you'll get to see everything in practice and what the book teaches us, you know? You'll, be get, you'll get a chance to see and learn in my classroom. And also, you must remember that in the classroom, that is where you really see theory into practice. In fact, we have a sports day coming up. You can come then. Okay, thanks. I'll definitely pass that to my group sure. and let you know. Just let me get your numbers. And I even got a number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tepo, for that wonderful example. I think we can definitely look at visiting Lisseli's class in the future. Mm -hmm. She sounds like she has some good ideas on how to cross-articulate theory and practice. Hold up, stop, pause. Now, before you add to my confusion, I have a lot of things that have gone way past me by now. What is it that you don't understand, KG? Well, for starters, what was that thing about the girl in the taxi? thinking that she won while she had a second place trophy. And why did Lissetti make her find a landmark for every kilometer travel? And lastly, what's this cross articulation of culture, practice? I'm confused. Maybe I can explain about the first, second, third place, etc. Please. This is when we speak about ordinal numbers. It means the order of the number concept. So it basically means what is first, second, third, fourth, 10th, 20th, 30th, 51st, 100th. Has your mom not ever told you it's the 100th time I've asked you to put away your clothes and you're still not doing it? When we want to see if children know the order of numbers, we check their understanding of ordinality. I'm excited because if you understand ordinality, then you may just also begin to understand cardinality. Yeah. And by the way, it's not culture practice, it's theory practice. Okay, okay. Let's stop. Yeah. We will come back to that. Yeah, I think, I think that's all the time we have for today. I yeah. think. Yeah, I think that's why it's here. Yeah, it's we'll just... pick up with this next week. Yeah. Next week. All right. Guys, yeah. let's just thank Claire and Nziki for their time. Okay. They will be with us next week. Yeah. <laughs> And remember guys, you all have very important homework. So I hope this discussion has given you some good ideas, yeah? Yeah. No excuses. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll thank see you, you so much. Thank you. That was wonderful. Yeah. tutorial we just had. Boring as usual. Boring. Did you see? It's achy. Yeah, I saw it to you. Yo, what up, man? Hey, what's up, what's man? Up, oh, man? What's up? how's it, Sean? I'm fine, man. What did I miss, you guys? I did... You missed homework. I missed homework. Oh, I'm so sorry, man. I had some ish to take care of. Yeah, but anyway, man, we have to come up with some new ideas to talk yeah, about mass. Yeah.
And like basically something like this is what I thought of. You know what I mean? Let's hear it. All right, man. Chapter two, we talking all the time to listen as I make it clear like bottled water poured into a glass. Oh. You see this path is like a pyramid stack. The second level is where we go with this cognition and math. You see the objects must be spaced out consistently when you counting the minute specific order with sequential alignment like rhyming. It's about timing and distance traveled inside it. Like climbing a ladder, counting the rungs up as you rising. Yeah, it's mesmerizing. It's mesmerizing. Damn, my Ooh. nigga. That's so hot, man. I try. That's I so try. cool, man. Just a little That's bit so more cool, practice and it might come out nice. Boy, show, 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 show. Show.